there are a lot of villains in the comic book world. A hero can't exist without them after all. And one of the things that makes a villain so compelling is their motivations, their reason for doing the evil acts that they do. A villain who is just greedy is too simple. No, what we love is a villain who we can relate to, understand and most importantly, sympathize with. When you look at a villain and think, yeah, I can see what they're doing and I might even do the same in their shoes. Well, it's just a bit more entertaining than a two-bit Bond villain who wants to rule the world for no real reason other than they just do. And this video is going to go over five villains who have the most sympathetic of motivations for being a bad guy. We may not agree with what they do, but we can certainly understand why they do what they do. Screenslaver Both of Evelyn Dever's parents were killed in a burglary gone wrong. And she believes that if her father had called the police and gone into the panic room, instead of calling two superheroes, then he would be alive. And to be fair, she's probably right. Her logic is pretty simple. Instead of depending on masked vigilantes with superpowers, we should depend on appointed officials and law enforcement to stop crime. She basically views superheroes as a childish idea that's fun for comic books and cartoons, but in reality, we need to grow up and fix our own problems. And it is hard to disagree, though her plan of mind control and murder isn't exactly one we can all condone and is pretty hypocritical. But I think we can all understand why she thinks the superheroes create more problems than they solve. After all, superheroes do cause a lot of property damage, and in many cases, they actually create a lot of the villains that they end up fighting. Magneto In some respects, Magneto is a complete hypocrite. He was a Jewish boy persecuted by the Nazis and put into an internment camp, and then he basically grew up and became Hitler, declaring humans genetically inferior to mutants and going to war with them. But his motivations do actually have a line of sympathy. After all, he lived through the darkest chapter in human history and was put into an internment camp just because he's Jewish. And then while he was there, he was subjected to inhumane tortures because of his powers. Now, that would screw anyone up. And combined with the fact that there are millions of humans who hate him just for being born as a mutant, well, you can see why he does what he does. I've been at the mercy of men just following orders. Never again. So although his methods are very hypocritical, you can understand his logic, and you can feel for him. After all, it's because of how he was treated that he thinks all humans are evil, and that they all want mutants dead. And although his actions have only made humans hate mutants even more, as they're scared of them, you can sympathise with him. After all, he's just trying to make sure that he and his people are never persecuted again. And he believes that this is easier to achieve from a position of strength. And if you do look back through history, it generally does seem to be true that the stronger side gets treated a bit more fairly than the weaker side. The Lizard Although I wouldn't classify the Lizard as an A-list villain, he does actually have a pretty sympathetic story. Dr. Connors had lost his arm and turned to science to regrow it, using a formula that he'd created based on a Lizard's DNA and their ability to regenerate limbs. Unfortunately, it all went wrong and this DNA he injected himself with transformed him into the villainous lizard and devolved his mind into that of a beast. And I think we can all sympathise with this. After all, if any of us lost a limb, then we would do anything we could to get it back. All he wanted was to be whole again and he ended up with a sort of Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde story that transforms him either into a mindless beast or into a monster with the same intellect as Dr. Connors but with nothing but sinister intentions. And this of course then leaves him to want his arm back and to cure himself of the transformations. And while some might say that it's self-induced, as he did inject himself with the formula that randomly transforms him into a monster, I think in his shoes, any of us would have done the same. After all, who wouldn't want to regrow a lost limb? Harley Quinn Now these days, Harley Quinn isn't really a villain. She's actually become something more of an anti-hero. But I'm referring to the original Harley Quinn back when she was a supervillain and a sidekick to the Joker. And her story is something that we can all relate to. She fell in love with the wrong person and will do anything to make them happy and to love her in return. Now, to be fair, most of us haven't kidnapped a billionaire vigilante, tied them up and suspended them over a pool of piranhas just to impress someone that we love. Harley is a rather extreme example of loving the wrong person and doing anything to win their affections. But we've all done something we didn't want to for the ones we care about. 
I actually remember 1x making me go see the second Twilight film with her. Although after I spent the whole time laughing at how stupid so much of it was, she didn't invite me to see the rest. Though admittedly that is nowhere near as bad as the stuff that Harley Quinn has done for the Joker. But my point is, we have all done stupid things for the people we love. And that's why we can sympathise with Harley Quinn, who just wants the Joker to love her and is willing to do whatever it takes to achieve this goal. Mr Freeze In many respects, Mr Freeze is not actually a villain. Though with that being said, there have been some stories where he has engaged in full-on evil plots, such as the many times that he has tried to turn Gotham City into a frozen wasteland. This is so he can live there as a person without needing his protective suit to stay alive. Although even that is done from a viewpoint of survival. But for the most part, he doesn't actually engage in over-the-top elaborate plans to achieve wealth or power. Yes, he's done a lot of villainous things, but the reason he's done that is very simple to save the life of the woman that he loves. His wife has a terminal illness and all he wants is to cure her so that she can live a full life. And he is prepared to do anything and sacrifice everything to achieve this goal. And that is why he has done such horrible, disgusting, evil things, because he wants to make his wife better. And this is something that we can all relate to and understand as we all have someone or something in our lives that we would give anything to protect and to keep safe. And that is what makes Mr. Freeze's character so great. He isn't some generic villain who has an evil master plan, or some Bond-style villain who just wants to take over the world. Instead, he has very clear motivations that we can not only understand, but to a certain extent, we can even agree with what he does. And that is five villains with sympathetic motivations. What do you think of this list? Do you agree that all these people should be on there, or do you think some should be taken off? And are there any other villains that you think should have been included instead? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.